Hi, this is Matt Yarbrough, bass fishing coach for St. Xavier High School in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm going to now talk to you about some hard baits, various crankbaits, various categories of baits that you're going to want to know about. <coughs> so we'll start with, uh, well, we've got them basically laid out here from shallow to deep and various brands you'll want to talk about. So we'll start with the Deep Diver. This is a Rapalhead DT14. They also come, I think, in a DT20. Uh, various baits considered from 15 to 20 foot depths of diving are considered deep diving crankbaits. Uh, maybe even 12 feet down. But you can see it's a pretty big crankbait. This is a large shad imitation. This is a color called Helsinki Shad, which I really like in clear water for various kinds of things. You can see it's got a large bill deep down in the water. It's a wide wobble, aggressive bait. Typically, you're going to fish this along creek channels out away from the bank. Uh, this is a great technique, especially in, in colder or hot water periods of the year. Particularly summer, a lot of people will fish this in ledge, along the ledges, creek channel ledges, uh, aggressively fish it down, take a long cast, and dig it down to the bottom, get it glancing off stuff. This is good for when you have big schools of fish that are setting up in those offshore structure kind of areas. So deep diving crankbaits. A couple other ones that dive pretty well, this is a kind of crankbait called a Rapala Scatter Rap. You can see it's a little different bill design, wider, kind of cup shaped. Uh, this one is supposed to run quite erratically, and it, it's a fairly small bait. You can see in comparison, the body of it's much smaller, much less intimidating kind of size. Still dives pretty deep in that 10 to 12 foot range. So, scatter wraps come in several different kinds of depths, and this is a deep wrap. So, it's a good one there. Again, the Helsinki Shad. Here's another quite natural looking one. It's got a little bit more chartreuse in it. It'd be good for a little bit gingier water. And then the crawfish pattern, brown crawfish. It'd be good for quite dingy water, or those times of year you think they're feeding on crawfish along the bank. Get that banging around the rocks up shallow. So, to go a little deeper, uh, different categories here. This one's um, lipless cranks. These are two different kind of lipless cranks. This is Excalibur and this is the Red Eyed Shad by Strike Team. Uh, you can see they're quite narrow. They have no bill on them so these can you can fish from right along the surface all the way to the bottom in very deep water. There's no real limitation on the depth range here. <clears throat> they will get hung up so you have to be careful with them. Uh, unlike some of these other crankbaits that if they get hung up they'll float away from the cover and you can keep going, these are just going to sink and once they get down to the bottom and they get hung up, your chances of getting them free are very unlikely, so you've got to kind of be careful with them. People fish, like to fish these in areas where there's grass a lot and they'll fish them along, get them snagged in the very top of the grass and rip them free and that's supposed to be a great technique, particularly uh, pre-spawn is a great technique uh, really throughout the year. So, lipless crankbaits can cover a lot of water when they cast far. <clears throat> so, if you go down the spectrum here, these are more DT baits. Which ones are these? These are DT sixes. A couple of different colors, shad imitations. They're going to dive to about six feet deep. <clears throat> They've got a pretty wide bobble, usually above 60 degrees water, is when they start to come into play, as opposed to shad wraps, which are good for colder water. Here's a DT4. It's almost a square bill kind of design. And this one's for shallow water. Here's my Helsinki shad color again. <clears throat> and as you get into very shallow water, you get into this true square bill design. This is supposed to be good for deflecting off cover, different kinds of wood and rocks. These are a good, various different designs here. Here's a, a bomber variety. <clears throat> and then I've got one of these it looks like a bluegill color for lacing fish this past year that didn't have any shad in it so it's more of a bluegill forage base. Another kind of hard bait that's good in cold water period and really throughout the year this is suspending this is a rattling rogue suspending bait and this is a floating version of that same rogue stick bait so this one you'll crank down and it's, it'll just stay there in the water column you can twitch it and it'll, it's great for uh, hanging around the fish giving them a long time to look at it and react. This one will, will go down and will float back up so you can fish it uh, more 
Subsurface, using fish, this is a wake bait right along the surface, uh, looking like a wounded hate fish. And at certain times, these are very effective as well. The last part of the hard bait family is topwater baits. I'll show you just two different ones. This is a Zara puppy, it's a small version of a Zara spook. You can see it's kind of uh, cigar shaped, maybe. Various sizes of these, they go up quite big, and this is about as small as they go. There's another size below this, but this is a good size. You can cast it far, and it works well on top. This is a walk the dog kind of bait along the surface. And then this is a popper uh, concave front, kicks the water out in front of it, makes a gurgling kind of splashing sound. Uh, and this is also a good bait. This one you can make a lot of commotion and not really move it that fast, so you can throw it up against shoreline uh, stumps and, and wood and things and, and get it splashing around and just kind of sit there and they'll come up and get it off the surface. So various kind of hard baits there. <clears throat> I'm going to throw most of these on bait casters. The smaller ones I'll throw on a medium action spinning rod. I'm going to throw on a bait caster. I want to typically throw it on a medium or slow gear ratio. 5 to 2, 6 to 4, those kind of slower ratios. A rod that's got some give to it so you can cast it far and, and it won't rip the hooks out. Another bait that's kind of in this category is a swim bait, and this kind of bait is similar to the lipless crankbaits where you can go all the way to the bottom or you can fish it right along the top. There's no limitation on depth, and it'll also, if you get hung up, it's hard to get loose. So, uh, very effective bait. You can rig it on an Alabama rig or just fish it straight uh, by itself. So, some great options here in retaining bait fish.